secretly working for the fossil fuel industry. <laughs> I stand before you here today to admit openly and proudly that yes, I work for the fossil fuel industry. <laughs>
Well, hi. Hey. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the second production of Maryland Night Live! <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. It's amazing how we're feeling tonight. You guys feel good? <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll be your host tonight. My name is John Hedrick, and yes, that name is so white it has tennis practice in the morning. All right. <laughs> what are you doing? I, uh, I kind of I want to get a feel for the audience. Any any lower classmen in the audience? Make some noise. Yeah. Contain the excitement. Sheesh. Uh, any upperclassmen? Any upperclassmen? Yeah. In a different spot in your lives. I get that. Uh, any alum? Any alum in the audience? Cool. Cool. Yeah. I still live with my parents. Cool. Uh, yeah. No. It feels good. It feels good to be back. I graduated here in the spring. Thank you, hold the applause. No, no, it's okay, you don't, you don't have to clap for that. I got, a, I got a degree in psychology. So clapping for someone who got a degree in psychology is like clapping for someone who streams on Twitch. It's just not impressive. It's for a lot of virgins. Uh, yeah, but it feels good, it feels good to be back. It's been crazy, it's been crazy. I had, a, I, had a, I had a crazy week this past week. A bar in my hometown blew up in Columbia, Maryland. Did you guys hear about this? No, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And I found out about it because my ex texted my friend's group chat about this. Which is like, first of all, why does every ex think that they're still friends with your friends? You ever notice that they're always like, oh my god, like how are Danny and Charlie? Like, how are they doing? And it's like, I'm here for my sweatshirt, cut the shit. You know why I'm here. But uh, so my ex texted my friend's group chat and she was like, this is so wild. I was at this bar last night and now it's blown up. And I was like, you should have stayed. <laughs> Oh, don't give me that! <laughs> who here is on good terms with their ex? Shut the hell up! Is this, that is a, oh, there's a bunch of Mormons in the crowd now? Is that what's happening? No, don't give me that. No one here is on good terms with their ex. That is the craziest thing. I'm not on good terms with any of my exes. Oh my god. Especially my first ex. I think it's mainly because I broke up with her with a two-week notice and resignation. <laughs> Guys, this is my first relationship. I didn't want to be unprofessional. I don't know. <laughs> It's crazy. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like any of my exes. I had this one ex that really liked going to the movies. Do you guys like going to the movies still? You guys still go to those? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I like what this guy does. Like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, going to the movies, I don't like going to the movies. It's, it's just the biggest lie that society feeds us. Well, capitalism, but you know. <laughs> but I feel like movies are the biggest lie that they, because, you know, they're always like, Welcome to the cinema. And I was like, why are you calling it like it's fancy? Like my shoes are stuck to the floor. <laughs> and then they're like, purchase tickets for a matinee. And I was like, I just saw a little kid put Mike and Ike's on a hot dog. <laughs> I don't think it's as fancy. Also, I just paid $30 for pets too. I don't think <laughs> it's the biggest lie. Yeah, well, I, I want to get serious for a moment. I'm, uh, I'm really proud of the show and how it's coming together. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm really stoked you guys are here. I, I do want to say this, I, I remember when the creative team came up to me and was like, hey, do you want to be head writer for this season? And I was like, I was like, I don't know. They were like, would you be comfortable with that? And I was like, would you be comfortable if Stevie Wonder was the pilot of your plane? <laughs> and they were like, you're hired. So, <laughs> so here we are, and it's, it's been really great. We've put in hours and hours of rehearsal time, writing time, workshopping, and, and we have 20 writers this time around, and I swear to God, they're addicted to the writing. They just won't stop. Joey, are you still writing? Yeah, I just want to get you one real quick before we start. No, dude, we have to start okay. the show. So, two sisters, they're witches, we give them Tourette's, we call it Twitches. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say it's been done before. I, I have Tourette's. I know. I know. Don't, so, don't, don't, do it. No. We have to start the show. Okay, I'm going to just say, all right, so some little grandmas, some little kid, in a basement, and then make a bunch of clothes. What would we even call that? No. No, no. No. Genocide the musical. No, I can't believe you actually pitched all of those. No, Sandy. No, Sandy, you guys. You want to do a TED talk? No, we're not doing that. What? No, we're not doing that. Is it better than Genocide the Musical? Well, listen. <laughs> we don't have to make that a sketch, because it's a reality at UMD. You guys, we got a great show for you tonight. Benny Roman and Anastasia are here, so sit back and relax.
this is likely going to end up in your parents' trash can. <laughs> also, why is the man in this drawing taller than his house? <laughs> so, what did you get for your birthday? Oh, uh, I got a new dollhouse and, and a tennis racket, and, and Daddy gave me a water gun.
Well, first, I want to start off by thanking my parents for spreading syphilis to me at birth. I have syphilis up in like this pail and emaciated. I also want to thank one of my sponsors, Flat Tummy Hemlock Tea. And this is the official tea of the Skinny Knights Brigade, and we're proud of our bodies. And lastly, of course, I want to thank my followers. I had enough of that bullshit. <laughs> 
First stand-up comedian of the night. Please give a warm welcome, Stephen Duransky, everyone. Okay. Look, I know what you're all thinking about me. You thought at the moment you saw me walk out, but no one's saying anything about it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Yes, I was homeschooled. I don't know what it is about me that gives off this vibe to people. But when they see me, it's like they think, oh, blue striped shirt coordinated with blue shoes? He must be homeschooled. Like, that's a level of coordination only a mother could have picked out. <laughs> One time a guy even told me that my handshake was a dead giveaway. Like, how does this translate to, he was trapped in his basement and taught long division for three years. People say it's because homeschoolers don't know how to socialize or whatever, but my time being taught by my mother at Doransky Academy made me great at socializing with middle-aged white women. <laughs> Maybe I need to do something to change up the vibe I give off, you know? Like, like a face tat. Like, when was the last time you saw a homeschooler with a face tat? I could get something real street, you know? I'll get a teardrop. But, but, but not because I've killed someone, but to show the world that I'm an emotionally developed young man. <laughs> Being homeschooled, parent-teacher conferences were always fun. I would just sit back, watch my mom jump across the table, and take notes for psychology class. <laughs> She'd be like, 
Well, <laughs> Mrs. Doransky, I think you need to do a better job in the classroom. Well, <laughs> Jody, I think you need to do a better job at home. Well, Jode, newsflash, because the home is the classroom, so, mm. <laughs> And then one day, I found out that my mother decided to teach classes at a local school. Hardest breakup of my life. <laughs> Like, am I not good enough for you that you have to start seeing other people? They say in a real relationship, size doesn't matter, but clearly class size was important to my mother. <laughs> Being homeschooled, I was always confused why I had to write my name on my paper. <laughs> or why homeschoolers canceled for snow days. And people would be like, oh my gosh, homeschoolers are so lucky because you get to wear your pajamas like all day long, right? Like, you say pajamas, I say prison jumper. <laughs> and the room that we did homeschooling in was a room in the basement with no doors to the outside or windows. But I was allowed to leave. I just always got the nastiest tan line for my ankle tracking device. <laughs> but after a few years, I did the impossible. I broke out. I know, crazy, right? If you go back to my basement and peel up the carpet, you can still see the tunnel that I dug to the local elementary school. There's nothing but a plastic Peppa Pig spoon and a thirst for education. <laughs> Since then, I've gone to public school, and I've had some pretty interesting experiences there, too. You know, like one time I was walking up the steps, and this woman at the top looks down and she goes, Oh, sweetie, your hair just looks so nice from above. <laughs> Like, yes, thank you for complimenting me on my hair from the one angle that literally no one will ever see it from. And since then, it's made me so self-conscious. Like, every time I meet a new person, I have to pretend to drop something on the ground and pick it up so they get the best angle. <laughs> like, hi, my name is Steven De Whoops. Oh no, where did my pencil go? Guess I'll just have to go on without it then. Where were we? And that same tactic works when I'm trying to find a girl to go on a date with, but then the whole time we're on the date, I'm just sitting there trying to watch the movie, and she's just sitting there like... <laughs> and, you know, the dates usually go pretty well, obviously, but they always end the same. I'll, I'll be there walking her out to the car, you know, like a gentleman, give her a chaste little hug goodbye, and then after the hug, she always freezes up and she goes... That hug. You were homeschooled, weren't you? <laughs> and then I never see her again. Thank you.
ridiculous. This is not, you are, you have been nursing a baby inside of you for nine months. You are nine months pregnant. Next slide. You are nine months pregnant. <laughs>
God, is that Jerry Seinfeld driving his Porsche towards that lady?
Asia M, everybody.
Hey, I'm Matt Reeves, director of Warner Brothers, The Batman. As you may know, Robert Pattinson has been cast as the famous Cape Crusader, but a lot of contenders were in the running for that mass vigilante. Here are their screen tests. Patrick Warburton, reading for The Batman. Take one. And, uh, which part was this for again? Uh, the Batman? Oh, the, the, this is the, uh, the audition specifically designed to cast. The costume vigilante, yeah. Batman's audition. Tommy Wiseau, reading for Batman. Take one. Jay Z, reading for Batman. What's going on, Joker? I'm gonna tell you right now. If you don't have 16 bars for me, I'm coming over there to kick your ass. I already told you 14 times, like, hold it that. So hopefully, y'all don't have to go through that. Was that, was, was that Batman? Where are the other drugs going? Oh, I sold them already. Look! <laughs> Beto O'Rourke, reading for Batman. Okay, so do you think the darkness is your ally? Thank you, so the question was, do I think the darkness is my ally? That's a great question, and thank you for it. We need to create a Gotham City that works for all of us. I never think the most confused guy that Gotham can come out. Well, beta, beta, beta. We really don't need the Spanish right now. Very slow, reading for Batman. Take one. How much is this again? Uh, two million. You think that's enough to pay for, like, all the students that just lost their accreditation? Jimmy Fallon, reading for the Joker. Take one. Take one. It's 2019. 
19, and Batman should be Asian and a woman. You know what, Scarlett Johansson? <laughs>
Trash recycle. It's not like that anymore. That was like trash recycle, compost, decompose, biodegradable, country music, the Detroit Lions, you know, black black. It's all garbage to me, man. It's all garbage to me. No, but on my way back to Maryland from New York, I decided to watch the uh, the new Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse movie on Netflix. Yes, it is beautiful. It is so beautiful. I smiled with my heart, okay? But it made me think about how like superheroes got their superpowers, right? Like Spider-Man, he got superpowers because he got bit by a radioactive spider, right? My boy got bit by a spider, now he got was Lyme's disease. You know? Now he just swings from doctor's visit to doctor's visit. That shit is trash. <laughs> But never mind that, never mind that. I'm just trying to better myself. And one thing that I'm trying to do is I want to learn a second language, whether it's like Spanish or French or wing dings. I got to learn something to diversify myself. You know what I mean? But I realize that even if I learn another language, I'm not fully going to learn that next language. You know what I mean? I'm going to learn like some like really formal language that nobody speaks. I realize it's like that for like foreigners coming to America. They might learn English, but they don't know like English English. They're like 1847 English that nobody speaks. 
Like, for instance, I used to room with a foreign exchange student from Spain, and we'd go out, he'd be like, Alex, I'm headed back to the residence. And I was like, are the British coming too? Because we call this shit the crib, the spot, the place. We're not filing taxes. This is just... That's because, like, he knows English, but he doesn't know English English. And he was telling me about the first time, like, he showered in America. He was like, yeah, the first time I took a shower, there was no shower curtain, so the whole bathroom was inundated. And I was like, what are you, a plumber? Like, who have you been hanging out with? Who is he? he would say weird words like automobile. Like, can you imagine me, like, being on my girl? I'm like, yeah, baby, I don't know what you're doing tomorrow night, but, uh, I took you a nice little ride in my automobile. <laughs> She's gonna be like, ooh, where are we going, the 1940s? <laughs> That's because he knows English, but he doesn't know English, English, you know what I mean? But, but that's because I'm just trying to, you know, learn more about myself, replace bad habits with good habits. That's what I'm into, replacing bad habits with good habits. So I told my friends, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stop smoking weed, I'm gonna replace it with reading a book. <laughs> but my friends are bad influences, they're just like, why don't you just read a book? while smoking weed. <laughs> I'm like, yo, fuck you, Kevin, for not supporting my dreams. <laughs> they came back two hours later, I'm sitting on the couch in a turtleneck like, nigga, chapter three is riveting. <laughs> I am in the world of this captivating experience, can I try? I would be using words like scrumptious. <laughs> He's like, oh, what are you reading? I'm like, oh, it's a Ruby Tuesday menu, nigga, shit's crazy. It's a chapter called Takeout, it's a murder mystery. <laughs> I'm not to see for you have a beautiful night. Attendance and punctuality vary seriously here at MNL. 
So sometimes we have to take things into our own hands. Hey, Jenny, I was wondering if I could talk to you real quick for a second. Yeah, sure, what's up? Yeah, so I noticed that you missed rehearsal this week. <laughs> My name is Lizzo Werner. I was in Maryland Night Live. Um, I was in the band, and I told them what happened, they just came after us. <laughs> oh my god. I think he's in here with us. Please get help if you find these videos, please. No, 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 please! You know, just that sourdough. 
or something and trying to change these like school lunch policies. Nah, bro. Like, what do I look like up in the White House? Talking about something? We're tired of eating rat dick. <laughs>
I was there. I will play a song that I haven't even played yet. <laughs> you don't even know. Yeah, it's never been heard by human ears. All right. <laughs>
boté el toilet. It's great, oh, 
QLC, a place for you and me. So welcome to QMD. It's a good place to live if you like living in a prison. I will say it's really great, but it isn't. Our diversity is the best around if you like ten whites for one brown. I'm the one and I know, I know, I know, just round down. We would be better if it was Georgetown. If, it would, if we were just Georgetown. Alerts from the UMPD, and they have no weeds, so what? <laughs> They're still better than UMBC, and Wallace Lowe can suck my butt. <laughs> but for real, on a real note, this place really is my home. It's not that bad, and can be swell if I'm a turp, then this is my turtle shell. Welcome to UMD, and it's home for you and me. And here, because here, we're family. So welcome to no AC, and welcome to you.
Uh, you can grab a pair of headsets out front and then come back in. Thank you guys so much for coming out to